here in the super plush studios of West USA who have given me this platform to give back to an industry that's just been absolutely terrific to me and my family. And this is my opportunity to give back to you. Now, last Friday, Joe Needham, who's a client of mine, was, was uh, nice enough to come in and do a uh, recorded interview. And I think you probably should take a look at it. It's, uh, it's, it's on YouTube. We put it up on YouTube. It's creating real estate wealth testimonial. I think you'll get a, 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 a big uh, a, a kick out of that. But what Joe brought to that interview was this. And I'm going to tell you, people love this. Joe has been on a strategy for four or five years. And I don't believe you in our industry understand the power of investing in real estate in your own industry, what the power of that brings to you. Joe had been on a strategy four or five years. He went to his boss and said, you know, I like these three-day weekends. I like having Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. He says, what I'd like to do is no longer work Fridays. And his boss said to him, well, Joe, um, he was a little taken aback. He said, Joe, how are we going to do this? He said, I, I can't pay it for Friday if you're not going to work. Joe says, I don't need the money. I just don't want to come here anymore. I only want to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I want every weekend off so I can have a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And of course, when holidays are uh, come along, I have a four-day weekend. That is is the power of investing in real estate because Joe is on his way to becoming retired. He's certainly well on his way to becoming financially free. And what that says is that his time is his own and he no longer is a slave to the fact that he needs, he needs income coming in because he's a real estate investor and each and every month that money comes in. This is what West USA is trying to bring to you guys is that they want you to have a great business but they also want you to have some income stream. They want you to become financially free and, of course, to retire whenever you'd like to because retiring is a financial decision, not a age. So that's what we're talking about. So next week, we're going to talk about the strategy to financial freedom. You're going to find that strategy. It's in my book, which is uh, you're welcome to buy. It's on Amazon. You're welcome to go to my website and you can you can pick it up as well. But it's, uh, it's going to outline a lot of the, the things we're talking about. But next week, we're going to talk about the actual strategy to financial freedom. And today's going to be a wonderful. We've got some topics for you. Hopefully, this brings up some, it opens up uh, some uh, interest for you that you find that maybe uh, um, you'll find things that, uh, that you like. Maybe this is something that you want to bring to your clients because everybody has the same concerns. And that is, how do I retire with dignity? How do I find the income streams that I can to, uh, to live my life? So these are topics today. So I want you to take a look at it. Well, we have four topics. Will your current portfolio deliver $10,000 a month when you retire? How different real estate or how different investment life cycles impact your source of funds? Source of funds is the key words on that. How do residential rentals perform strategic functions for an investor? And when should you pay cash or when you, should you use a purchase money loan? Now, these are really good topics. We're going to discuss these right now. So let's let's dive right into it. So how to achieve my long-term financial goals? Number one question, this is a softball for us. Will your current portfolio deliver $10,000 a month when you retire? Now, if you want to have a really good life, our goal is for you to get 10 properties giving you $1,000 a month cash flow minimum. Now, today, keep in mind that the average rental is going to throw off about $1,000 to $1,200 pure, unadulterated uh, net cash flow each and every month. So it's pretty easy for us to do. So what we're trying to do is find financial freedom via cash flow and appreciating properties. So keep in mind, I have the three, at the three A's plus C, accumulate appreciating assets that cash flow and of course, what's my favorite asset class? Residential rentals, because they're conservative and they throw off a monthly cash flow. So how different investment life cycles impact your source of funds? In life, there are life cycles. We, we start out young, we grow old, and we have different issues as we go along. With my investors, we have a suitability because when you're young, you have a different risk parameters than when you get older. Same with investments 
Same with um, companies. Now, when we talk about some competing asset classes, because this is an integrated asset approach, you know, I don't expect you to have all your assets in real estate. If you're in a business, you should have a sizable portion of it. And it's been an absolutely incredibly powerful investment. So this is something I would highly recommend for you. However, you probably have some things in, a, in stocks and bonds. And of course, there are cycles to stocks and bonds. Now, bonds have a very, very, very long life cycle. It runs about 75 years. And you can look back around 1981, 1982, interest rates peaked. You can see before them, about 35 years before, how interest rates climbed. And then in 1981, 82, they started, they rolled over and started to decline. And they've declined basically for 35 years. And they are down to next to nothing. Now, when they're at next to nothing, their life cycle, you've seen it for 35 years decline. When you look at a, a total picture of 70 year cycle, you know that bonds are probably as far down as interest rates are going to go. And it's much more likely that the interest rates will go up than to go down. And uh, interest rates climbing in a, in a uh, fixed rate portfolio causes huge losses. You can lose a lot of money. So talk to your financial advisor about the risk that you're running if you have a fixed income portfolio. So when you're investing as well, at a professional investor says, I'm going to buy it at uh, X and I'm going to sell it at Y because I want to take that delta that's in between there. And I want to take that as profit for myself that I have an entry level and I have an exit level. The amateur investors like you and me, we're the last ones to know when things have changed in the marketplace. And we have a tendency of riding a stock up and riding a stock down. So you, you never take a profit. We talked about the fact two weeks ago that there was a huge divergence in the marketplace and that marketplace uh, was at risk and it was a big red flag that something was not quite right. In the last three or four days, we've been vindicated saying that, yes, this divergence was, a, was giving us some forewarning that there were problems in the market. And if you are going to do a stock purchase, you need to talk to a financial professional and find out what your entry level are and what your exit uh, levels are. So what investments are in a secular trend? Well, this is real easy. Real estate, which is a separate asset class from stocks and bonds, you know, they're only correlated on Wall Street, what, eight or 9%. So we're talking about the fact that um, these are in a completely different cycle. Real estate is not going to, going to peak for at least another four or five years. So you have four or five years of very, very good cycle with which to season your investments. In the, next, uh, in the next phase is the explosive phase. So right now in the cycle that we're looking at, my cycle research says that we are in the accumulation phase. And my work would suggest that we've got the explosive phase coming. So nothing but good sailing for real estate, but maybe not so in the stocks and bonds that their cycles are ending. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that we have some strategic functions that a real estate uh, investor can have. And when you have stocks and bonds and that they're at the end of their cycle, what you may want to start thinking is, is this a source of funds for me? So if you're thinking that maybe I'm overweighted in bonds and of course, being in bonds, it's often income. As you get older, you want more and more income. However, interest rates are down at a 5,000 year low and they're really giving you no yield at all. So the function of a bond probably is no longer compatible with today's environment. So you probably want to look for a different asset to throw off income. That asset probably is residential rentals for you because it's going to give you four or five times the income that a bond is going to give. And of course, if you go for safety, which is talking about a U.S. Treasury, that's like the safest investment in the world. You want something very, very, very conservative, very, very safe. They give absolutely no income at all. It's 0.15%. And you cannot possibly live on something like that. So we want to look at something that's in our portfolio to replace them. And if you sell your bonds, you may want to start thinking, maybe I want to replace them into a different asset class and put them into, uh, into real estate. So when we start talking about how do real estate perform a strategic function within your portfolio, Keep in mind that residential rentals are leveraged. And of course, 
when you start leveraging, if you only put 20% down, this is the magic of leverage. So leverage, keep it, let me back up. In 2008, 2009, we had a terrible marketplace. It was not the properties that took investors down. It was the debt on the properties that took investors down and they lost all kinds of money because they were over leveraged. So if you over leverage, that can be a problem. If you leverage in a good market, like the accumulation phase that we're coming through, now you can mitigate that risk. So if you put 20% down on a property and an interest and the property appreciates 3%, just 3%, that's a 15% capital gain on your 20% down. We are in a marketplace today that's looking at 10% plus 12%, 13%, 14%. We're in a really, really fast marketplace. So if you put 20% down and you got a 10% appreciation, you've made 50% capital gain on your property. Now let's get this to like you're an initial investor where you buy an FHA where you put less than 4% down. And if, the, if you have a 10% appreciation, you have had 250% capital gain on your property. Where do you go to get that? However, you just have to be careful what your leverage is. Now, when you leverage your property, real estate can give you both capital gains. Keep in mind that if, when we use a tenant, that tenant is also paying down the principal reduction on that property, but we're getting cash flow. So what a great asset for yourself. So these are easily leveraged. We can, uh, we can go, uh, depending on how, how uh, your risk tolerance on properties, we can uh, put more money down, we can put less money down, whatever works for you, but we really need to know you. Keep in mind, I do offer a one hour free consultation so we can sit down and find out what your risk tolerance is. Where are you on the risk tolerance? What, where, at what point are you gonna have trouble sleeping at night? We certainly don't wanna get that. So when we start talking about residential rentals, they are, generate consistent cash flow because they are one of the basic needs. You need food, you need water, and you need shelter. And we are uh, investing in that entry level and just above the entry level, at least with my group. Now, keep in mind, there are other segments within the real estate classes that work very, very well. We've talked about student housing. We've talked about the vacation rentals. We've talked about elder uh, rentals, uh, renting to seniors. Seniors stay a really, really long time. They like it, and they like uh, clean, safe, and friendly is the theme for uh, for rentals and for uh, elder, and they'll stay with you forever. However, these my the group that I like the very best is mom, dad, and a couple of kids. They'll set put down roots and they'll stay with you four years, five years, ten years because your rental becomes their home, and the kids will go in school. They get involved with sports. They'll get involved with all the kids in the neighborhood. They'll do scouting. They'll do dance. They'll do soccer. They'll start buying bicycles and canoes, start putting them alongside your house, and they're not going anywhere, and they just keep paying the rent, and they will pay for their rent before they pay anything else because they do not want to disrupt their house, and they want to make sure that there's always a roof over their over the heads for their kids. This is just a basic need. So this cash flow that you receive on our rentals cushions any of this, the turmoil that we're having. Now, this is a perfect example of what has gone on in the last four, five, six months. We've had real turmoil in the marketplace. Now, it's been really, really good in our real estate business. But if you were if you were a uh, restaurant owner or a bar owner or you had a venue, what if you owned a theater or you were a musician or an artist uh, or maybe um, you work in the, in the wedding industry, your industry would be dramatically impacted, wouldn't it be nice to have a separate income stream that just comes in month after month after month? It becomes a lifeboat for the investor. That cash just keeps coming in and you can have $10,000 a month coming in whether you work or not. And you, just like Joe, you can decide whether you wanna work on Friday or not because you've got this consistent cash flow coming in. Now, when should you pay cash or when should you get a purchase money mortgage? Well, this is a good question. This is why we say we'd like to know our investors. We'd like you to come in and talk with us because we'd like to know what your goals are, what your risk tolerance is, and what's appropriate for you. When you're young and you're on your career path and you're getting, you have a good job and businesses coming in, 
where you don't possibly need the income for yourself, we would say you probably want to leverage. Now, if you're just starting out, we have a uh, strategy for those just starting out that you can get in for little or no money down. Particularly if you're a veteran, we can get you in for no money down or you get into FHA, you can get a 5% down. But of course, the payment's higher. So you are sacrificing some of your cash flow to leverage into the property. This is probably very, very appropriate for you if you're if you're still uh, in your 30s, 40s, and early 50s. This should probably work just fine for you if you have a, a good career path coming in where you don't necessarily need that cash flow. This would be a great way for you to accumulate properties. And where are we in the cycle? We're in the accumulation phase. So probably a very, very good uh, strategy for yourself. So probably want to want to uh, uh, leverage into a lot of properties right at the moment, particularly when we're in a marketplace that's appreciating rapidly. And we have lots and lots of trends here in Maricopa County. Don't we? have got all those Californians coming over. We got the baby boomers retiring. We've got people coming out of Chicago and, and leaving from the high tax states to the low tax states. So the trend is your friend on this. So you probably want to leverage. But we need to know who you are as to what your risk tolerance is. As you get to be my age as a baby boomer, boy, we become very risk averse. We don't like to be too terribly risky at all. We want to be very, very careful with our money. And we do a lot more cash down payments. So instead of putting 20% down, maybe we're going to put 50% down. And a lot of my baby boomers are taking their capital stacks that they've earned from uh, a lifetime of investing and are starting to, to migrate that money from out of the stocks and bonds into a much more uh, conservative class. And of course, real estate throws out, uh, not only is it conservative, throws off a lot more uh, cash flow. And as you get older, that cash flow is gold. That pays for our cruises. We get to take our baby on the Eiffel Tower and we don't have to sell our positions in the, in the stock and bond market to go ahead and afford to do this because we have a livable cash flow coming in. So number four, when should you pay cash and use a money market loan? When to acquire more properties or pay up more principal? Well, of course, this again depends on where you are in, in your life cycle. The younger you are, the more you would want to convert that cash flow from your uh, tenants and turn it into principal reduction. This is the beauty of real estate is that we can amortize a property to fit almost any scenario that you'd like us to do. We have strategies for that as well. We just need to know where you are and where you are in your life cycle. You just need to think, do I want to retire in 20 years? Do I want to retire in 30 years? What do I personally want to do? Do I want to accelerate this? What do I need to self uh, uh, become uh, par uh, partially retired, semi-retired? So um, I would guess that depends on you, but we certainly have that ability to tailor these, pro these uh, uh, portfolios any way that's going to work for you. So it de again, depends on who you are. This is why we ask you to know your clients. So let's talk about a couple of scenarios here so that this becomes real live to you. So purchase a rental, tailor that principal reduction to pay off at a particular time. Let's say you're 30 years old and you want to retire at 50. We sit down with you, decide how much income do you need, want? I mean, how much do you need? How much do you want? Now, we set artificial goals of $10,000 a month coming in net to you. I know some of you think, wow, that's a lot of money. This is done on a day-by-day -day basis. This is the power of, of uh investing in residential uh, real estate, particularly in the, in the great powerful markets of Florida, Texas, and Arizona, where you have demand has come into the marketplace. And when you have demand, it pushes uh, uh, the prices of, of uh, properties go up, you get appreciation, and you get rental increases come into these. And of course, that when you get a rental increase on one of your properties, that goes straight to the bottom line. So if you get $150 a month increase, on one property, that will be fifteen hundred, or that's eighteen hundred dollars uh, for a year. That goes right to bottom line. What if you had ten properties and got one hundred and fifty dollars a month? That would be uh, fifteen hundred dollars a month net cash flow to you just in one year. And we're seeing this right here in Phoenix. We're seeing one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars a month increase on their properties. If you had ten properties in that particular portfolio, you can get anywhere from fifteen hundred to $2,000 additional each and every month. That's gonna be 18 to $25,000 additional just this year 
in pure unadulterated cash flow to yourself. And you can easily do this. So we can tailor this. So if you want to retire at 50 and we know what you need to do, what we say is we need to buy these properties so that and tailored amortization one to, to amortize out at 20, the next one at 19, next one at 18, and no, next one at 17, and so on and so on, so that they're all paid off by the time you're 50 years old. Just think of the power of having 10 free and clear properties in your portfolio for the rest of your life, generating pure unadulterated cash flow. Just think if you had 10 free and clear properties here in Maricopa County, you're going to be getting anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 net each and every month for the rest of your life. If you had ten dollars to $15,000 a month, and you could do this coming in whether you worked or didn't work, do you think you'd have a little bit of freedom in your life? Do you think that your life would just be a little bit different? So here's another, here's another scenario. How about if you're going to retire at 55? Or if you're 55, you're going to retire at 65, you find the perfect property. Maybe you find a property that you've been looking for. It finally comes available, but you're 10 years too early. It's up against the mountain. It's on the lake. It's next door to your mom and dad. It's a big, big, beautiful piece that you've wanted all these years, but it comes onto the market too early, and it's too expensive. Keep in mind, as a resident, we've got caps on what we can, we can deduct. You can only deduct the interest on up to $750,000. Not so on a rental. You can deduct as much interest as there is, so you can buy this property 10 years early, put a tenant in, you pay $3 million for it, you've got, uh, you're paying uh, interest on $2.5 million, and that interest is completely tax deductible to you, and you can acquire the property early on, get a nice tax write-off because you have all kinds of tax benefits in owning real estate. There's no cap. So will this work for you? Maybe, maybe it'll work for one of your clients, and this just gives you an option. It's just a great way to do business. So what if you're starting a fund for college? I love this one. What if you're just starting out? You had your first child. They're a baby. They're one years old. And you go, oh, my God, all these obligations I now have as a, as a father. I've got to do. I've got to provide for my, my child. And I got to look. I'm looking at 18 years out. I'm going to have a huge obligation for college. Well, let me tell you, how about you go and buy a house? Go buy a property and we'll tailor it so that it pays off when they're ready to go to college. So in 17 or 18 years, who's paid that mortgage off for you? Your tenant has paid that property off for you. You make one down payment on it. You're done. Your, your tenant pays the rest. And 17, 18 years later, we do a principal reduction on this. And when your child is ready to go to college, you have a free and clear property. If you paid $100,000 for it, your tenant has paid the other $80,000 off. So you're going to have $100,000. But you know, it's probably more likely a $300,000 house. And if you got $300,000, you know that you can send your kids to school. Here in Arizona, it's about $25,000 a year to send your kids to one of our state schools and, and do board and, and tuition and, and books. So you'll get $25,000. If you just get $100,000, that's one uh, child's for your tuition. You do a $300,000, you can send three kids, but who paid that tuition off? Your tenants did, and you got tax write-offs along the way. What a great deal to do this. We can easily do this. We, can, we have strategies for these things. So let's talk one more. Here's one of my favorites. It's so hard to get money put together. You know, I'm not a car guy, so it's probably easier for me, but a lot of my friends really love cars. I mean, they really love cars. You know, you buy a car for uh, $100,000, you know it's only worth $88,000 the next year, and it's only worth about seventy six dollars the year afterwards. So you're losing about $1,000 a month. But I talk to my friends, they don't seem to care. Personally, when you get that kind of money put together, if you got $100,000, I would say to you, you're better off going and buying a piece of property with that $100,000. It's so hard to get that money put together and let the income from that property give you the money to pay off a loan on the car that you want. And I know that might take eight or nine or 10 years to pay off a big expensive car, but who's got all this time? You got all kinds of time to do this and who is making the payments for you, but your tenant. Your tenant makes that payments for you. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do this. If you find somewhere 
you would go you want to buy something instead of actually spending your money on it why don't you buy an investment that throws up enough capital to pay for the things that you want that way you have the investment and the things that you want at the same time try not to spend this capital and spend it and give it to someone else whenever you get the money put together we want to invest it where it's going to give you some capital and it's going to give you some income for yourself to make your life much, much better. So I'm going to try and be very, very uh, 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 conscious of your time. We're about 25 minutes into it. Next week, we're going to be talking about starting a strategy, how you can build a powerful, powerful real estate portfolio for yourself that's going to throw a cash flow for the rest of your life. You're going to, you're going to earn and create generational wealth that can be uh, willed and it be a legacy for your family. This will go on and on and on. You'll never deplete it. And we're going to start teaching that strategy next week. So let me go to the next. If you have any comments or questions, you're welcome to email us here at creatingwealth at westusa.com. If you'd like to be involved with us, you're welcome to send a uh, uh, email to creatingwealth at uh, westusa.com. We're going to be having some seminars, workshops, and a couple of designations. If you'd like to get on a waiting list, because we're waiting for ADRE to, to help us along with this. If you'd like to get on that waiting list, please uh, uh, email us at creatingwealth.westusa.com. And if you'd like a flyer to send to your clients, send us an email at creatingwealth.westusa.com. At, uh, we'll send out this uh, uh, flyer, and you're welcome to... Uh, send it out to your clients and maybe maybe it'll pique their interest to start doing this. And keep in mind, if you need to talk to us, talk to me. If you'd like to book a time where you can come in and see me, it's area code 602-942-4200. As always, it's my very best to you. Go have a great week. Bye-bye now.